Hello and welcome to CivilNet. Uh, all of Armenia and much of its diaspora is anticipating the April elections, parliamentary elections in Armenia this year. And what happened is that since the referendum in 2015, Armenia is on its way be going from a presidential system to a parliamentary system. This also implied a new electoral code, which the lawmakers have been working on. However, the new electoral code, which is to be tested the first time this April for the first time, uh, well, not a lot of people understand it in depth. We there have been it, it has been said that there's a lot of consensus. The opposition did get some points in its favor when the code was being written. However, generally there is no evaluation of how the code, the new electoral code, would would work and how the elections are gonna uh, gonna go this April. Uh, for this reason, we're talking to Hamas Astanir, and he's. Uh, is a professional in this matters. You study electoral codes, you are of the processes. Thank you for being here, Hamas. So there's a lot to be understood about what's going on in this. Not everyone is happy, not everyone is unhappy with this. So what's the balance? What's, going, what's the evaluation generally? Thank you for the invitation. Indeed, uh, we have uh, completely changed um, legislation, completely new electoral system, and uh, part of the story is that in this new system there are regulations that are quite new and not only for the Armenian reality but also you, you can't find some of these regulations anywhere in, else in the world. Um, so, and besides these experiments we also have regulations that were initially designed by one purpose but we need at least one election to test on the ground how those are working in reality. So, uh, Hamazas, what are the things that are completely new to the world of elections that Armenia came up with, with this new code? Well, for example, um, the overall philosophy of both constitutional changes and uh, electoral, um, new electoral system is considered to be proportional, but there are regulations that, at least that is my reading, are going against the basic principles of what is proportionality. I've heard for example, this uh, several times. Yeah, for example, years. we have a limitation on number of parties that can form coalition after elections. It can be more than three parties, which is a um, strange and unknown regulation because uh, that's the essence of proportional system where you uh, delegate certain number of parties and then they need to find ways of cooperation between each other. Another such example could be considered the second round um, in cases there is no uh, majority Sorry. formed in the parliament. Um, and so what are the things that need to testing? For example, is, the, is it more of the technical stuff with the uh, cameras in I think 70 or 90 percent of the polling stations mm -hmm. or the uh, electronic voting system? Are these things that should be tested first? First, uh, that, that's also part of, th there are so many innovations that uh, we often time confuse. There is no electronic voting system uh, for um, the parliamentary elections with the exception of this small number of uh, diplomats and soldiers serving outside of Armenia, which are a few hundred people. Uh, we are talking about just electronic registration system, which again should be tested. Uh, you mentioned about uh, video recording of the precinct, uh, precinct uh, area. Um, it was included as a part of the consensus, but uh, as uh, things progressed, consensus between uh, the governing parties and uh, opposition, um, there uh, were a number of seedbacks, for example, how many cameras and how many precincts are going to be covered. Or what but the locations that is not would be if they would, I mean, I heard a lot of concerns about where would the, these cameras be placed, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. I would not put much attention on this, although it is important also for other aspects. For example, in terms of camera, there are already uh, media reports uh, that uh, people are being informed that um, you are going, since the precincts are going to be recorded, your vote can be identified, therefore 
you need to be cautious and deliver whatever you are expected yeah. to be delivered. So, and we know that this uh, from the anecdotes that uh, even previously when there was no camera in the precincts, people were um, they were asked told to take that, for example, they, they their ballots, not right? only that, but also people were said that um, here is a pen or. Um, here is a pen and it has a camera, then we will be able to identify how you voted. Mm -hmm. So, especially for certain um, electorate, this, this trick can, be, can, can work and have negative effect. One of the things that should be tested and was considered uh, uh, an important uh, consensus breakthrough, both by the ruling parties and the opposition, was um, publication of signed voter list. This is a big issue because at least uh, since early 2000s uh, almost all opposition parties um, always demanded the publication of uh, signed, voters. signed voter so list. So this, this is the, uh, the basically the physical uh, like official paper documents document that where people come and sign when they show up to vote and then well with the signed voters list I think during the referendum I was an observer and you were not allowed to even take a photo of that signed and you already had as a as an observer you had very limited time with the uh, the, the copy book itself and however you were allowed to copy from it because those documents were the only like official documents, reference documents, and were considered to be secret because they contained official information on uh, who voted and who didn't. And um, it was considered uh, from the op uh, from the government part. It always uh, it always was said that this is a matter of secrecy of vote, but. This October electoral code was amended and um, a special regulation was introduced on publication of this signed voting list. However, Which my the opposition took as they a victory, demanded, yes. and, and in a way they were considering this as, a, uh, as the most important issue, maybe um, I would say a silver bu bullet against uh, vote rigging, um, although I, I don't share this opinion. But we have what we have. We have a regulation in place. But my concern is that it has so many details. It has so many uh, conditions that in order to be able to take advantage of this new regulation, parties, civil society should be aware about this. And uh, including, most importantly, Armenians, citizens of Republic of Armenia who are living abroad because uh, the part of the story is that opposition always claimed that uh, because we have hundreds of thousands of citizens who are abroad and whose names are in the voter list and they don't have right to vote during the elections unless they travel to Armenia. These numbers are being, these yes. names are being abused. Well, I experienced this during the referendum. A lot of families would come and see their brother's or father's name on the list and say, why is this here? Because he's not here. And then they would think that someone voted instead of that, uh, in front of that name. And uh, there, there is also other, uh, n not just your first hand information, but there is also another type of evidence, especially following the 2015 referendum when, um, Dozens of uh, court cases uh, so the referendum were, were, were covered where, where, yes. where these names were abused. I, am, I can't say anything whether it is going to be abused this time or not, but in order to be able to use this opportunity, uh, public should be aware that they have this opportunity. And because there are a lot of details in this, for example, uh, citizens that are living abroad, they should know that there is a time limitation Limit. when they can uh, check whether their names are, uh, there is a signature uh, on. Hamas, you were saying these, uh, this, these documents will be up online for about 24 hours, that's uh, it? Or is uh, it? According to, uh, they will be up for a later period, but there is a limitation of, of when you can. Uh, check uh, and do something. Check and uh, uh, submit a complaint. appeal, complaint. Um, and for example, they will be, according to law, uh, starting from the second day, they will start scanning and it will be uploaded on CEC website. 
So but the trick are, is the trick sorry. is that if you are living abroad, you can't uh, mm, uh, do anything um, because there is a strict limitation of uh, no, uh, of people who are, who have the right to bring a case. Uh, to about the court this. or make an appeal. Yeah, so to, to make an appeal, and those are political parties, those are proxies of political parties, those are um, uh, members of um, election commission, and the last, uh, the individual himself, her, herself, but for this you need to be physic physically in the country. So and you have can just, I recap just here? So three, three days. Uh, um, Till the third day, uh, the deadline for this uh, procedure is the third day of the after, after the, the elections. Uh, so, so, if I understand this right, I wanna I, I wanna recap kind of like th there was this concession that everyone was really happy about. However, the continuation of it is that people outside of Armenia or within Armenia need to be notified of actually the preconditions that this concession was made, mm -hmm. and also have to be notified so that they can practice their rights mm -hmm. that comes with this new uh, the publication of. Are yeah. they? Are people? Or also, the, for example, there is an initiative by Citizen Observer. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there is a website where you can uh, submit your yes. your information, as a, regardless where you are locating. If you are not going to participate in elections, you can submit your information, and then they are going uh, to compare with the official voting yeah. list and then take action. I've done that last year because I was going to be an observer, wouldn't have a chance to vote, so. Uh, I actually went in and checked myself out of the list mm -hmm. to notify them, and I did so for my family as well. So, uh, people, do people know what what comes with this concession? That there's uh, work to be done after the elections as well, because usually what happens is that the elections happen, whatever very evident, uh, you know, problems there are. We keep talking about it, but there's a lot of work to be done after the elections and before elections as before well. In terms of, for example, uh, when these um, changes were being done in the electoral code, some of opposition parties are very. Uh, uh, positive uh, that they are going to uh, be able to collect enough information to have a, a good database of these names of people who are absent from the country. I am. I. I doubt that they have done it. Uh, and the only uh, such kind of initiative is this citizen observer initiative so far that I know. But again, it is not very known, and there should be a campaign so that people are aware. Especially, we are talking about. Um, um, hundreds of thousand people who are, for example, living in Russia and their media access is slightly different than from the Western diaspora or English-speaking diaspora. So why, why aren't the opposition political parties, why, why aren't the different opposition initiatives uh, voicing this, their concern or starting campaigns regarding this or else because this, this little victory isn't going to lead to much Unless, unless you, you also do the work, uh, what, are they not aware? Are there too many problems to get to this? I it is there not enough resources to I actually uh, take care of this? I don't have first hand information, but my guess is that it's just because they are busy with other more urgent things and they don't have enough resources human, financial, etc., to, to compile uh, this kind of database, for example. How much is off the top of your head for a professional to sit down and compare this list? Is it something feasible to be done within how many, what, what's the workforce that it would take to actually compare these lists and analyze them within three days well, um, and prepare you know, court cases or submissions? Or the thing is that f um, uh, manually, it will be next to impossible to have a, a whole comparison of, of, of databases. Uh, so it depends also what kind of uh, software probably. I, I think it's in the law that the, it is going to be a PDF uh, uploaded in um, CEC website in the P PDF format. So it's a matter of how readable this PDF is going to be. 
Um, but these are technical aspects. So um, as much as I am aware, for example, for the referendum, Citizen Observer was able to uh, do the work with the databases and they have a uh, technical capacity. The matter is more, um, at this point, is about awareness of the people, of uh, citizens who are residing abroad especially, that they have a chance to have a meaningful engagement, not to participate in the elections, but at least to make sure that their, vote, their name, their vote is not being um, used. Um, and for that, they need to follow the procedure. And first, they need to submit their information on the Cit uh, Citizen Observer website. And then on the next day after the elections, go into the CC website, find out if uh, their or their relatives' names are there signed uh, and oh. then maybe notify in other ways because even if you don't uh, have an um, opportunity to, to start a legal process you can start I don't know a social media campaign if there are a huge number of these kind of cases and it can uh, have some some effect considerable yes. uh, how much one last question we're running out of time unfortunately and there's so much to discuss but however this is a very important aspect that people need to be notified of um, let's say I find that there's been someone's voted in my name or my, uh, my, my information has been used in, in the elections uh, who do I notify if I'm, I'm really adamant on starting a, a complaint or a court case? Mm -hmm. What's the connection between the citizen that finds this fault in the electoral process and the political party or the proxy that is allowed to submit a complaint? So if you are residing in Armenia, you can start the process yourself. Um, you probably know that Armenia is, has uh, been divided into 13 um, territorial uh, uh, districts and um, ele electoral districts and you can submit your uh, complaint to the one of these 13 depending where, where you are located but also you can do it indirectly infor informing political parties or proxies of and representatives of political parties. And for someone who's in the parties. diaspora, uh, Russia, sitting in Russia and finds out that he's, there's someone's voted in his Then the, the option is either to just announce and make other, other people uh, aware. aware about uh, this fact or uh, contact uh, political parties indirectly and submit your information. Maybe also evidence that you are lo uh, you haven't traveled to Armenia, you are oh. located outside of Armenia, and then ask them to start the process. Because even the uh, observers, NGOs, are not allowed to submit a complaint. The, the, the number of uh, uh, players who are eligible to submit a complaint are very limited. Yes. Time is limited, <laughs> this uh, circle of people <laughs> is limited, so uh, we have this um, opportunity, uh, but we need to, well, the first of all, it's not fact that this time around is going to be abused again, but uh, society should be prepared to, uh, to monitor this process, because uh, if after the elections there we will find out that uh, there haven't been a significant amount of this kind of uh, fraud, uh, cases of this kind of fraud, uh, then uh, my uh, assumption is that for the next ele ele electoral code we won't have this regulation anymore because there will be a good case of, uh, for the people to say that... that oh, well, we don't need it. We, because these names are not, going to, are not being abused. Thank you very much, and thank you for joining us. I hope you found this conversation interesting, and also we encourage you to go to the Citizen Observer site, check your name, if your name is in, uh, in the list, and if you're not going to be able to vote that day, notify the site. It takes a couple of seconds only. I've done it last year. And also be aware, if you're not in the country and you're not voting right after the election, you have a very limited amount of time to check if you're, someone else has, has voted in your name or if you're information has been used in, uh, in the elections. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.